So as you can see, we've got the uh, jacket on there. It does make it look more boiler-like. Um, I've got a few of the apputrances uh, screwed on. First, of course, is the sight glass fittings and tube. Uh, it's got water in the system right now temporarily. Um, what I like to do with this sight glass is to make certain that the uh, nut and the sight glass are perpendicular. So when you tighten them up, uh, they stay tight and they don't leak over the years. Uh, a lot of times you'll see this thing slightly cocked. And yeah, it'll work, but eventually, more often than not, it'll start to weep over time. And you want to reduce that possibility by making sure that this is aligned properly. Now, right about here is going to be the pressure and uh, pressure control tree. This is what... Uh, well, McLean supplies, you're supposed to thread it in there um, like that. Uh, but the problem is with this, we believe that uh, this will tend to get clogged more, e more easily with, um, with sludge. So we um, modify this um, to reduce that likelihood. Uh, the pressure troll comes right out of the box, set at about <laughs> nine pounds cut in. Um, and uh, that, of course, will be adjusted. But that's the way they come. You, it is up to the you, the boiler installer, to reduce that to uh, the lowest practical limit that this thing can operate at, usually at about a pound and a half. So that'll be adjusted um, later. Now, this is the skim tapping. Normally, it comes plugged. Want to? The nice thing about having this long tube like this is it's slightly canted, and so any dirt shows up here, collects in here um, over over the use of this boiler, and this cap can be removed and the goop uh, scooped out. This is where the uh, probe type low water cutoff is mounted, and today we're using a hydro level 450. Our sight glass blowdown. Now with this, because of the access door, you need to add a a street 90 to get it off. I'm going to attach a hose to here and have it uh, run down to the bucket there. Normally this is plugged. Uh, in this case, it's a lot easier to have a cap and nipple. You can get a wrench on this without the door. The burner is set in place. Uh, temporarily, um, just to sort of get an idea, so you can get an idea of what uh, what it is. We'll go on this later. There's a whole other topic of this thing. I'll come around here. Pardon me. Um, this is the uh, drain valve that is usually supplied with. Um, this boiler, uh, this is going right immediately into the uh, scrap bin. Um, usually we substitute these quarter turn uh, legend valves, which are um, have enough clearance for the door to open and shut, yet provide um, a good flow when you open this up. Now, out in front here is where we are thinking about mounting the VXT. Um, not exactly certain whether it's going to go up here or up here yet. I haven't quite worked that out, and that is going to be today's uh, fun. I have mounted the relief valve. Um, normally what comes with the kit is this um, fairly short nipple and 90. And the trouble is when you crank this in, 
the tapping provided, uh, the fitting is so close that when you thread on this relief valve, it it starts banging on banging into this uh, jacket. So it's and you have to mount the jacket first before you mount this guy. So what I've done is substituted a slightly longer nipple. Now, if this was hot water, the 90 would be fine. But with steam creating a lot of sludge, I found that um, it's a good idea to have a T here so you can remove this readily and scoop out the schmutz that collects in here. You can put the T back online and this can be done. Now this drip was on the old boiler and we're going to repurpose it uh, to this one. We use a uh, compression fitting here so that uh, it can be removed easily without using a torch. Again, this is where the uh, where we're going to exit uh, with the flue. Uh, you have a choice of coming off the top here. Um, usually we like to exit out of the back because it's a little quieter. Um, and this is going to come out here and uh, go up to there. I've got a reducer, uh, seven by eight reducer. We're coming out with seven inch and uh, it's gonna kind of make things tight. Now I've got this piped in uh, permanently. It's been sitting overnight with water to find any egregious leaks. Uh, they don't appear to be any. So it looks like we're gonna proceed. Our drain valve is here. And we've got another drain valve here on the end, um, full port ball valve. It's a nice ball valve in that it's a male by female. And then uh, you get one of these adapters where you have a three quarter inch male by th uh, three quarter inch male hose. There's a slight difference. You gotta be careful because sometimes on the shelf you might grab instead the hose by hose or sometimes if you want the hose by hose connector, you can grab one of these um, male iron pipe by hose and that can that can cause a little bit of issues. Uh, so you gotta gotta be mindful of the difference there. You can see the difference. Now when the jacket went on, uh, they advise you to pipe this on after the jacket, but uh, and they've got a hole that you have to knock out there. What I did is I cut that little bit of slot out so that I can uh, fold the jacket on there without uh, and, and and make this up when uh, and then I can put the jacket on at my choosing. Um, useful to have a pair of tin snips around. Um, Got a little anti-seize on the unions. There you can see the sort of coppery uh, smudge there to allow for um, disassembly in the future. Um, this is all made with, with steel rather than copper because what's coming out of the wall there is steel. And you don't want to put any more electrolytic pressure on this uh, piping than, than necessary. Uh, so for, for long life, uh, we believe that uh, this, the, the steel is going to be a, a better choice. Um, it's a little bit more difficult fitting it in, but uh, I think it's going to work out. Got cutoff valves here to, um, this is the drip, as we've discussed in a couple of videos. Um, this works because the water line is right about here. So... Uh, the steam can't get down in here, just, just the water, and then uh, it's going to return back to the boiler. Um, one of the major things you got to be very careful of in this boiler is that um, the sections, the front and rear sections are nice if you look at the older videos, but uh, the middle sections are rather narrow. Um, only about that wide. Hi! And so we're uh, making, uh, we have to make sure that the water is clear, otherwise uh, this will uh, not produce uh, good steam. And so that is where we are at this point, and I'm signing off.